Well, it looks like uh, Halliburton and friends want to occupy New York, New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. <laughs> 20,000. This is no laughing matter. 20,000 hydrofracking wells. This is incredible. Josh Fox. This requires the expertise of Josh Fox. The, the uh, filmmaker and activist made the movie Gasland. The website gaslandthemovie.com. If you haven't seen it, get thee there. And uh, Josh Frack in the Delaware. Hi, how are you doing, Tom? Great to have you back with us, Josh. I'm fine. Well, um, yes, as, as, as it turns out, you know, the, the context that the movie Gasland started with, um, the Upper Delaware River Basin, where my home is at, where a lot of people uh, started to become familiar with because of the film, is now under attack. Um, we've been fending off regulations in the Delaware River, which would allow <clears throat> a Delaware River Basin, which would allow for a huge number of gas wells. The conservative estimate is 20,000, according to this regulatory plan. Um, for three and a half years. And on Monday, a week from today, uh, there will be a vote at a public hearing um, in Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, no, that's Monday, November 21st. And we're asking people to go to savethedelawareriver.com. It's a new website that we've started, mm-hmm. savethedelawareriver.com. Our partners are 350.org, Delaware Riverkeeper Network, Democracy for America, Environmental Working Group, Catskill Mountain Keepers, the list goes on and on. And we are urging people to get to that hearing and get inside that room and change uh, this situation. Um, yeah. There are a number of different kinds of actions. And again, those, those groups have all aligned. Um, uh, we have the email going out, I think, through NRDC. There's a group called Occupy DRBC. That's Delaware River Basin Commission. So there's a lot of uh, wind blowing in that direction. And just as for me, it's a personal appeal. Mm-hmm. because I've been traveling all over the nation, all over the world, um, to about 200 cities in the United States and to five continents, um, looking at gas drilling, showing the film, making our new film, Gasland 2, and campaigning, and now it's, it's kind of come home for me. And so uh, to time to kind of defend home turf and ask people, please, to stand with me and stand up for 15.6 million people's drinking water. Um, and, of course, this national treasure that we know of as the Delaware River Basin, which would be forever industrialized um, and irreparably harmed uh, by this massive campaign to do hydraulic fracturing in the upper Delaware. We're talking with Josh Fox, the filmmaker and activist for Gasland the Movie. Gaslandthemovie.com is the website, and if you haven't seen it, you must. And, Josh, you know, many of us who saw the movie, what's been about a year now since it came out? Uh, well, actually, <laughs> it depends on when you think of it as coming out. Sundance, January 2010, was the premiere, so almost two years ago. And then on HBO, it really went across the nation um, starting in June of 2010. So it's a year and a half, and it's so, still playing. And it's yeah. playing tonight at the University of Delaware. Um, I'll be there uh, Great. doing a Q&A uh, and a press conference and a, and a rally. Great. Um, well, the, the, and I'll be playing the banjo as well. The, the, that's wonderful. The reason, the reason why I ask, or, or the context of this, was that over the last six to eight months, and I think in large part this is a testimonial to you and your movie, that since your movie came out, people have become you know, sensitized to what fracking is, and the natural gas industry is buying all these feel-good ads on, on television, particularly on cable news where they may have news shows, opinion shows, where it's conceivable that there would be a debate about fracking. And so now yeah. they're pouring millions of dollars into these television networks, and guess what? There's no debate about fracking. There's no discussion about yeah. fracking. It's invisible on these networks, except for these really sweet, feel-good ads about, oh, this is our gas well. It's in our backyard where our children play. See, right there next to the teeter-totter. Teeter well, Isn't fact, it beautiful? In fact, I was on MSNBC yesterday morning with Mark Ruffalo. We were talking about <clears throat> the Keystone Pipeline victory, uh, at least temporary victory, and where we have to move next, and, and November 21st being a, a crucial next uh, moment in this momentum. Um, and sure enough, in the commercial break, you had Chevron coming on talking about, it's not just oil that we want. Now, they left. <laughs> so uh, um, it is amazing. It is yeah. amazing. Well, every they, time and- you turn on cable news, every time you open up Time Magazine, Newsweek, you, you, you will see an ad that is sort of a, the soft sell of uh, fracking. Now, it's a change, 
from before when they were outright attacking the film right. um, with vicious smear. But here's campaign, here's the. Attack. Here's the main message of these ads and, and of the news articles that they've gotten embedded in the media that we many po people who are paying attention have seen. And that is that, well, in the early days of fracking, we just drill a hole in the ground and pump a bunch of junk down there. And, yeah, it might have been contaminated some waters, but we've gotten really sophisticated about this now. Mm -hmm. And we line these things with two layers of steel and we run concrete between them and we go down through the water table and below it way, way, way miles below it, and that's where the gas is, and so we don't contaminate the water table anymore. We're good guys now. We figured this technology well, out. We got it down. Yeah, that's what they say. They call this technology, the former head of Exxon calls it brute force. Right. We have documents that were leaked from internally from the industry that show that 40% that of those well casings leak, um, and they're responsible for uncontrolled discharges. Uh, and that, in industry speak, that means they're losing their product, in uh, our universe, that means they're contaminating our aquifers and contaminating our air. Um, so you have an, an industry, they call these well integrity problems. Um, and 40% of those wells have integrity problems. When you have that high of a number of these wells going badly, uh, and you have an industry on television every day saying, with ad after ad after ad, um, or spokesman after spokesman saying this is all safe, then you have an industry with an integrity problem. Yeah, well, that was that was my question to you, is having seen all these ads and having read the articles in The Economist and The Financial Times and, and The New York Times and whatnot over the last you know year or so that seemed to suggest that eh, the fracking industry's got its act together and the big oil companies, you know, they... They, can't, they couldn't afford the lawsuits, and they need the cooperation of the communities. So everything's fine. Just go back to sleep. Um, I just wanted to, to do well, a reality check a with play. you. They're making a play. See, this is, the issue is this. We are running out of easily accessible oil and gas um, and coal. Right. And instead of being sane um, and having the world start to move towards renewable energy, as these energy companies could advocate, because we know right now that renewable energy, wind, solar, hydropower, geothermal, these things could be running the world in a very short period of time, and we could get ourselves off of fossil fuels. Instead, what you see these companies doing is they've just gone insane. And they are developing what we are calling extreme energy, that is fracking, that is mountaintop removal, that is tar sands for, uh, ex extraction for oil, uh, that is deep water drilling, ever more dangerous um, and uh, uh, contaminating processes of getting this much harder to reach gas and oil. And that is subjecting populations to very, very hazardous chemicals to an increased number of accidents and problems. When you talk, the reason why these wells are all, I mean, look, you're talking about a gas formation that is very, very deep and an enormous amount of pressure exerted on that well infrastructure. You're talking about 20,000 pounds per square inch in terms of these racks. You have an incredible amount of wastewater. You have a lot of uh, uh, blowouts. You have, um, uh, statistically, what I'm seeing just in my investigation on the ground going all throughout the United States, an enormous uh, rate of contamination, which pretty much um, guarantees that if the industry comes in at the scope and at the scale that they like, you're guaranteed contamination in your aquifer. You're guaranteed pollution in your air, and you're guaranteed that people in that area will have a health. Uh, health amazing, uh, Josh. We have just 20 seconds left, so quickly plug uh, the event coming. The Delaware, up. Save the Delaware River dot com. If you missed the your Keystone XL, or if you were there, come. This is going to be another day where we change the world. You've got to be in that room November 21st in Trenton, New Jersey. You can find out information about buses and uh, the nonviolent action training at savethedelawareriver.com. And there's also a video that I released there that's a primer on um, why this is so necessary. So please go to savethedelawareriver.com. Thanks, Tom. Say, you're, you're welcome. Savethedelawareriver.com, Josh Fox. And uh, you know, occupy the Delaware River. There you go. Josh, thanks so much. Thanks, Tom. Great talking with you, and, and great having you on. I, this this is uh, and and shocking to hear the forty percent leakage right now with all these sweet ads. Oh, everything's under control.